I am 100% sure that most kids of us in the 1990s have grown up with great TV shows that aired back in the day. Most of them were aired on TV channels that people watched when they didn't have cable. I was one of those kids, and let me tell you, it was amazing. But that's all, not all. Those who had a VHS player back in the day would watch episodes from shows that were recorded, as well as movies. Mainly because when we had school, we couldn't watch our favorite shows when they were on TV. The only time we were able to watch them is at a certain time, mainly when we were home enough for us to watch new episodes of brand new TV shows. I happened to have a nostalgic feeling one day. It all started when I was still living with my parents. I was around 23 years old, still looking for a job, and I was also a college student at the time. I was scrolling for YouTube, watching new videos that were out, even just watching random videos out of boredom. I happened to see some full episodes of my favorite TV shows that were my childhood. Mainly I'd watched them when no one else was around. That was because my so-called friends would make fun of me for watching kids shows. But since I was used to that as I was autistic and it didn't really matter, when it came to when I came across a TV show that I somewhat remember seeing as a kid, but I can't remember 100%. I do know it was made by Deke around the time that the show came out. The videos I found were full episodes of the 1990 animated cartoon series. It was no other than The Wizard of Oz. It is based off of that movie that MGM made back in 1939, and in the years later, Deke Animation City decided to adapt the movie into an, an animated series. I kind of remember watching it on TV. It might have been the fans at the time I was around 6 years old. For as much as I had, I had watched all 12 episodes of the show. Honestly, it was definitely something I was um, really enjoying. And I honestly cannot regret any last bit of watching it. I enjoyed watching childhood shows, but I always wondered about something with the series. The question I have is this. Why didn't they have a 13th episode? Or a second season in my ad? That always bugs me ever since I watched a full series. I then decided to go on Flare, that being out of boredom of you from YouTube, only watching some videos that were not available on YouTube due to copyright, be right, and or other stuff. Vlare is a video site for those of you who don't know. It's kind of like YouTube, but it's pretty different for those who want to know uh, until they unfortunately shut down the site. While scrolling through Vlare, I found a video that was based on the Wizard of Oz cartoon series. No, it wasn't a Japanese anime or anything like that. It was a cartoon series from the 1990s, which I mentioned earlier. I noticed the title of the episode, but it was something I have never seen before. Now, however, the video titled was called The Wizard of Oz Episode 13 Freaky Friday. Now I was starting to get excited, mainly because this was the 13th episode of the series, but that was not all. I was going to be the first, first of these people to view this episode. I saw that the video was posted to Vlare maybe about 16 minutes ago with only 5 views. I expected more, but maybe be this site is not as popular as YouTube, so that could be a coincidence. I clicked on the video and looked at the timestamp. The episode was at least around 24 minutes long. I knew that this episode was episode 13, mainly because the first episode, The Rescue of Emerald City, was split into two parts of the episode. It all started off with the intro. You know, Dorothy, Toto going to Oz, meeting their friends. They have Glinda being shown along with the Wicked Witch of the West, the wizard, and as well as the flying monkeys and other characters. Once the intro ended, a title card popped up with the episode title. The episode's name was called Freaky Friday. I was wondering why that episode was called that, but I was wanting to know and wonder about this episode, so I continued to watch. Most of these episodes start off with Dorothy and her friends as usual. They were on the yellow brick road. Most of these episodes start off with them chasing after the wizard, who was being blown away by the west wind, 
but that didn't happen in this episode. Instead, we see Dorothy and her friends lying down on some grass in a meadow, relaxing. What a nice day today is, Dorothy sighed. You sure said it, Dorothy, the scarecrow replied. Toto then curled up into a ball and laid beside Dorothy. I could see clouds that looked like a butterfly, the tin man pointed at the clouds. I see it. Dorothy pointed at the butterfly that the tin man pointed at. There is so much clouds in the sky, no west wind, thank God, Cowardly Lion said. Then the episode shows Dorothy V and her friends looking, but of course the episode cuts to the Wicked Witch of the West in her castle. She was looking for a crystal ball as usual, only spying on Dorothy and her friends. I need a plan to get the ruby slippers. I think I know just what to do. The Wicked Witch of the West smirked evilly as she ran to her potions area. She also scrapped her spell book. After flipping through the pages, she finally found a spell that would for sure work. Aha! She said in satisfaction. I'll put a spell on Dorothy. Her body will be switched to mine. And while I'm in her body, then I'll give the ruby slippers to Dorothy in my body, then switch back, then I'll be ruling all of Oz for all eternity. Ah, 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 ah. The Wicked Witch of the West cackled as Truckle being seen on the screen in the next shot. He was eating a banana split with ice cream and he wasn't paying attention to when the Wicked Witch of the West called his name. He just ignored her. Truckle, I need your help, the Wicked Witch called out, but Truckle didn't answer. The Wicked Witch of the West grabbed their monkey's sidekick's banana split, then tossed it out of the window. This caused the monkey to get mad, and he didn't like what his boss did. What's this that for? Truckle said angrily. He wasn't happy what his boss did. I haven't finished my banana split. Shut your mouth, monkey, the Wicked Witch replied. She smacked Truckle across the face. We're going to pull off a Freaky Friday, and this time I'll get the ruby slippers. What's a Freaky Friday, your wickedness? Truckle asked as he was confused on what the Wicked Witch of the West said. Man, your monkey brain is the size of a pea. My plan is, I put, is this. I put a spell on Dorothy. It will cause her to switch bodies. That is when the Freaky Friday move I'll be pulling. Plus, I'll give my body the ruby slippers burs, while I'm inside of Dorothy's body. Then we switch back. I'll have the ruby slippers. Ah, 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 ah. The Wicked Witch of the West replied with an evil smirk on her face. How would that work? Truckle asked. I'll have Dorothy under the spell with this fortune cookie. She'll make a, the biggest mistake that she'll regret. Ha, 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 ha. The Wicked Witch cackled as she wanted her plan to be a success. The next scene transitions to Dorothy and her friends traveling back to Munchkinland, mainly because they needed were needed by Glinda. But I wasn't sure why they were needed. But when Dorothy and her friends reach Munchkinland, Glinda then shows up. My dear Dorothy, Glinda began as she hugged her best friend. The Wicked Witch of the West can be seen in the bushes. She was disguised as a Chinese woman, you see in Chinese restaurants such as Asian One, etc. She was waiting for the right moment. The Munchkins and I wanted you to come here, mainly because we have a problem, Glinda said. We can help. What's going on? Dorothy asked. Well, I could say that the mayor of Munchkin Land and Munchkin City was kidnapped, Glinda replied. I think the Wicked Witch of the West has something to do about it, but we need to find him. We'll do that, right guys? Dorothy asked her friends. They all nodded in agreement. Then a Chinese restaurant woman showed up with a fortune cookie. She walked up towards Dorothy and Glinda. Would you care for a cookie? The Chinese woman asked. Dorothy then conceded, started to get suspicious about the Chinese woman. Glinda then took the fortune cookie before Dorothy could. I wasn't sure why Glinda would do that, but the next part of the plan is when I find out. The Chinese woman ran out of sight and hid behind the bush. That's when the Wicked Witch of the West shapeshifted back to normal and watched in distance for the spell to work. Glinda held the fortune cookie in her hands and Dorothy was confused. Glinda, why are you holding the fortune cookie? Dorothy asked. I don't know, Dorothy. It might be dangerous for you to open it. So this is why I'll do it since I'm here. Glinda replied as she opened the fortune cookie 
It had a piece of paper with writing inside. What does it say, Glinda? Scarecrow asked. I hope it isn't dangerous, Cowardly Lion added. Toto then started barking aggressively at the ink piece of paper held in Glinda's hands. Dorothy was sensing that something was wrong, but she stood at the thought. It says, what you're about to see will be freaky, whatever it is. Glinda was confused, so she was thinking for a moment when a puff of purple smoke came out of nowhere. Dorothy and her friends took cover at this. Once the smoke was gone, Glinda had a look of terror on her face. Glinda, are you okay? Dorothy asked, only to earn a smack across the face by the Witch of the North. What's this? The voice wasn't Glinda, but instead it was from the Wicked Witch of the West. Then she realized that she was in Glinda's body when she should have been in Dorothy's body. Why did this happen? I thought I was supposed to be in Dorothy's body. Dorothy was confused, but at the same time her friends were. But then they realized that something wasn't right. Did they s switch bodies? Cowardly Lion t stuttered in terror. I'm afraid so, Lion, Scarecrow said. Well, since I'm trapped in Glinda's body, I'll have to get the ruby slippers this way, the Wicked Witch said in Glinda's body. She then used Glinda's magic to turn all the munchkins into stone. Her spells missing Dorothy and her friends, thankfully. Glinda, who was behind a bush, rubbed her head. She then looked and realized that she was in the body of the Wicked Witch of the West. Oh my goodness, what has happened to me? Truckle then looked at Glinda. He was just as confused and dumbfounded on why his boss voice sounded a lot like Glinda. Mistress, why does your voice sound like that good old nothing Glinda? Truckle asked. That's because it is Glinda. I'm trapped in this wicked witch's body. Glinda then realized in horror that the wicked witch of the West was in her body. She saw that the munchkins were turned to stone. Only her magic was used by the Wicked Witch in her body. Oh no, she's in my body while I'm trapped in hers. I must go get Dorothy and her friends right away. This is not good at all. We better get out of here, Dorothy said, as she and her friends ran out of Munchkinland, only to be stopped by Glinda. Dorothy, it's me, Glinda. Glinda's voice was in the Wicked Witch of the West's body, so the Freaky Friday spell went differently. I started to realize that the Wicked Witch's plan backfired. Well, not really. Glinda, is that you? The Tin Man asked. Yes, it is me. I'm trapped in the Wicked Witch's body. Glinda replied. We'll have to find a way to switch you guys back. We'll just need to find up a way. Dorothy replied as the Wicked Witch showed up. Not in her own body, though. You'll need to reverse the Freaky Friday spell if you want your body back, Glinda. Ah, 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 ah. The Wicked Witch cackled as Dorothy used her ruby slippers, and she pleaded them, them to her and Glinda and her friends out of Munchkinland. When they teleported away from Munchkinland, they all ended up near the gates to Emerald City. This is not good. Glinda's trapped in the Wicked Witch's body. The Cowardly Lion began to shake his head. He was confused and scared by what has happened. How are we going to reverse this Freaky Friday spell? The Scarecrow asked Dorothy. The Wicked Witch did say something about it. I think she has a spell book, Dorothy replied, noticing that Truckle wasn't around. Glinda had pretty much can control dark magic, but since she didn't want to be trapped in a Wicked Witch's body. We're near Animal City, but the wizard isn't there, Tin Man said. As Dorothy and her friends saw, the wizard returned to Emerald City. He landed his balloon as soon as he saw his friends upon his beloved Emerald City. It's the wizard. I'm sure he can help us. Dorothy said. And get the mayor of Munchkin City free, Glinda replied. The, wick the wizard waved to Dorothy and her friends when he saw them. But when he saw the Wicked Witch, he didn't know it was Glinda at first. Dorothy, the Wicked Witch is right be with you guys? The wizard panicked. Wizard, Dorothy called to them. Glinda just stood there confused at was what was going on. Glinda's in the Wicked Witch's body. Something has gone wrong. The Wicked Witch is in Glinda's body, only using her magic for evil. It's true, while I'm stuck in this, her body, Glinda added. How did this happen? The wizard asked. The Wicked Witch wanted to use a spell on me and her, mainly to switch bodies, Dorothy replied. Glinda did risk it by having her body switched, and now we're in this mess. I see. I hope you can get your body soon, Glinda, 
like get it back, the wizard said. Me too. Man, I don't think she brushes her teeth, Glinda replied in disgust. She could feel that the Wicked Witch had never brushed her teeth in God knows how long. We must warn you, Glinda, this body you're in is weak to water, which means if you get wet, you'll melt, the Scarecrow warned Glinda. He's right. We'll have to keep her away from water at all costs. We just need both bodies in order to switch back, Dorothy added. How are we going to switch the bodies back? The Cowardly Lion asked, hoping the wizard could help. Well, the Wicked Witch of the West could reverse the spell, but it has to be the Freaky Friday spell. The wizard replied, that gave Dorothy an idea. If we go to the castle, there might be a book on how to reverse the spell, Dorothy began. And if the mayor of Munchkin City is there, we could set him free. That's a great idea, Dorothy. But since I have dark magic for me, it may be hard for me to control it. Glinda replied as she used the Wicked Witch's dark magic just to only make a broomstick appear. Whoa, Glinda's doing well with the dark magic, Tin Man said in shock. We gotta hurry. We have no time to lose. Goodbye, wizard, and thanks, Dorothy said. As Glinda with her broomstick took off in the sky, Dorothy used her ruby slippers and commanded them to teleport herself and the friends to the castle of the Wicked Witch. So far, this episode was interesting. I never understood why this episode was never aired or shown on TV. It was rather a good episode, but it was freaky as hell, like I've never expected the Wicked Witch to use a spell that get too far. Well, not gory type of way. The next scene shows the Wicked Witch in Glinda's body with Truckle. She had fun using Glinda's magic. This is so amusing. Using Glinda's power for evil is just as much fun as tormenting people. <laughs> the Wicked Witch cackled as she used Glinda's power. She mainly turned the munchkins into stone and, of course, decided to vandalize a bit of Munchkin City. Do you think Glinda's going to do about it? Truckle asked. The Wicked Witch turned at the winged monkey. She ain't doing anything. As soon as I get the ruby slippers, Glinda wouldn't be able to do anything about it. She doesn't even know my dark power. The Wicked Witch replied. Suddenly she uses Glinda's magic and sets one of the munchkins' houses on fire. You're causing it to burst to flames. I was starting to get nervous that the Wicked Witch would use Glinda's magic for evil. But I wanted to know what happened next. So with the next scene cuts to the Wicked Witch's castle. Inside the castle, we see Dorothy along with her friends and Glinda were there. Are you sure about this, Dorothy? Glinda asked. I have a bad feeling about this. The guards won't know it's you, Glinda, as long as you stay quiet. The Scarecrow replied. Wait till we get back, you back in your body, and that wicked witch will not be getting away with this. Dorothy added. Then you could show that witch silly. This cowardly lion bellowed. Dorothy and her friends sneakily went inside the castle. They made sure the coast was clear. Luckily, they did not get caught by any of the Wicked Witch's guards. While the scene then transitions to the Wicked Witch's room, they spotted a few things. They found a spell book on a table, along with the Wicked Witch's crystal ball. There's a book, the man, Tin Man pointed out, as Dorothy picked up the spell book on the floor. He, they then looked it towards the book. Here's a spell that switches the witch's body and Glinda's, Dorothy said. Hmm... Glinda began to think. Then she had an idea. Is there a way to reverse the spell? There's something about reversing the spell. It's going to be a bit of a challenge, Dorothy replied. We'll need two people in a room or an area, and then we'll just have to give one a fortune cookie. Just like how the Wicked Witch did when she tried to switch your body with hers, the Scarecrow said. But Glinda saved you. That was very heroic of her to do that, the Tin Man added. But however, the fortune cookie is to be given by someone who is the one who cast the spell. So Glinda would have to give it the fortune cookie. It's in order for the bodies to switch back, Dorothy replied. But I don't use dark magic. What if I hurt someone? Glinda asked. Can you make a fortune cookie appear? Dorothy asked. Glinda used her Wicked Witch's dark magic. The fortune cookie appeared on her hand, and it was just like the one that Glinda took from the Wicked Witch. I did and no one is hurt, thankfully. I'm surprised, Glinda replied. Now we just need to get to Munchkin Land. The Wicked Witch is probably up to no good, Scarecrow said. Then Dorothy looked into the Wicked Witch's crystal ball. She had a horror of look on her face. She got her friends to see, along with Glinda, 
of what was happening. Oh dear, the Wicked Witch has turned munchkins into stone, Dorothy said in worry. And she's vandalizing the place by setting the houses on fire, Cowardly Lion exclaimed. We have to get back to Munchkin Land right away, Tin Man added. Suddenly, Dorothy and her friends heard banging coming from the door. Toto began barking like crazy. He knew someone was in the closet. What was that? Glinda asked. Then Dorothy walked up to the door, which she assumed to be the closet, and opened it. It was the mayor of Munchkin Land. The mayor of Munchkin Land? Tin Man was surprised, along with everyone else. The Wicked Witch kidnapped me and... The mayor of Munchkin looked to see the Wicked Witch. He got so scared he ran back into the closet for a second. Mayor of Munchkin, it's me, Glinda. Glinda opened the closet door. Long story short, the Wicked Witch and I switched bodies. The mayor stepped out of the closet. She did? But why would she do that? The mayor of Munchkin Land asked. The Wicked Witch wanted her and Dorothy to switch bodies for the ruby slippers. But I stepped in, so I'm in her body while she's in my body using it for evil. Glinda explained. We'll have to get your body back soon, Glinda, the Scarecrow said. Yes, the Wicked Witch is causing more trouble, Dorothy added. Then Glinda used her teleportation spell, even though it was still dark magic. Dorothy, along with Glinda, Scarecrow, Tin Man, Lion, and the Mayor of Munchkinland with Toto, all ended up being in the center of Munchkinland. The Wicked Witch was having fun using Glinda's magic, so she didn't even see Dorothy and her friends return with the mayor. Dorothy and her friends all hid behind the bush, forming up a plan. How is this plan going to work? Scarecrow asked. Glinda will give the Wicked Witch the fortune cookie, and then when she opens it, what the book says, so Glinda and the Wicked Witch should be back in their own bodies. Dorothy replied, as long as we go by what the book says, we'll be here in case if something happens. Tin Man added. Glinda then took a deep breath, then walked out into the bushes. The Wicked Witch turned to see Glinda in her body. She smiled wickedly at her. Well, Miss Goody Goody Glinda, how does it feel to be inside of a Wicked Witch body? Ha ha ha. The Wicked Witch asked as she cackled. Care for a fortune cookie? Glinda asked as she showed up the fortune cookie to the Wicked Witch. All the mischief that she had made in Munchkinland made her a bit hungry. Now, come to think of it, I am quite hungry. Well, maybe a little. Well, a snack wouldn't hurt. The Wicked Witch snatched a fortune cookie from Glinda. She opened up the cookie and ate the edible part. I think it's going to work, Dorothy whispered. Toto barked as she saw Truckle flying away. Funny enough, Truckle didn't notice Dorothy and her friends behind the bushes. I guess he was blind, or maybe he just didn't see them. I knew this was going to be the ending, as it only had a few more minutes left of it. Mm, the Wicked Witch said as she took a small piece of the paper that was inside the fortune cookie. Your plan has backfired, so prepare for what happens next. Suddenly, a puff of smoke surrounded the two witches. As soon as the smoke disappeared, both Glinda and the Wicked Witch were back to their own bodies. I'm in my own body, Glinda said happily. The Wicked Witch snarled as she was about to put a spell on Glinda again. However, Dorothy used her ruby slippers, and the Wicked Witch of the West was thrown into the air by a firework attached to her. I'll be back for you, Dorothy! The Wicked Witch screamed as she disappeared into the air. She's back to her own self, Scarecrow said, and Glinda's back to normal, Dorothy says, as Glinda used her magic to reverse what the Wicked Witch did. The munchkins were free from stone, buildings were no longer on fire or vandalized, Everything in Munchkinland was at peace. The mayor of Munchkinland had thanked Dorothy and Glinda for the help they had desperately needed. The ending shows Dorothy and her friends on their way again to see the wizard when the episode ended. I was surprised. Not only I saw that this episode was never aired, but I was one of the first people to see it on Vlare. I wanted to know where this episode came from. So I went on the Deke and City Animation website to see if I could find the episode. But however, I couldn't find any trace of information on the episode I saw. So I went to contact Deke Animation City. I emailed them and I explained to them about the episode I saw. I waited about a month until they replied. They said and explained that the episode was going to end the first season. But before it was aired to the public, it was scrapped. The reason why the writers of the episode Freaky Friday 
was planned to air after the 12th episode Hot Hair, but after it was made, the writers lost interest in the episode, so they scrapped it even when it was finished. But no one knows about, about it. Besides the director and writers, the cast and crew, and the ones that were involved were the ones who made it. But they were the only ones that saw the episode. I was wondering why they didn't have the second season of the series. Maybe the episode I watched was supposed to end it? I have no clue. But maybe someday I will know for sure. Until then, the episode was on Flair for those who wanted to see it. But since it was taken down, however, still to this day, I don't know if there's any more traces of that episode left or not. But hopefully, maybe someday, I hope to find it again, even if it's on another video site, forum, or if anyone was lucky to see this episode as I do. Please update me if you ever get a chance.